Hi there, my name's Paul, aka Avon in BBS circles, and also known as the Mystic Guy. Thank you for tuning in. This is the second in a series of videos as we take a look at setting up Mystic Bulletin Board System running on the Raspberry Pi OS. And in this video, we'll be taking a, another step forward in how to set up your BBS to connect to a message network. To start with, I just want to fire up a, a terminal and I've tried to increase the font size uh, of the terminal based on some feedback from a previous video. And for those of you that are new to this, what I did is I went into Edit Preferences and I simply set the terminal font to 14 instead of, I think it was on 12 or 10. Then uh, when you close everything out and you restart the terminal, you get a much bigger size. So we're changing the directory to Mystic, the root directory and into Mystic. And then I am going to run the Mystic local login because I just want to take you back to a message that we posted in an earlier video to start with. So from the main menu I go into the message menu and you'll see that we're already in the FSX net group and the area is set up for chat testing and more where we posted that message earlier. So if I press R to read, press enter a couple of times Here's our message that we posted last time and it's sitting there with a status of local. So this video is about how do we get this message out of the bulletin board and off to the hub that we want to send it to. So if I hit escape and Q to quit and then forward slash G just to get out of the bulletin board program, I just want to fire up a file browser and take you down into the Mystic directory where I have added a couple of other any files which we'll be using during these videos. The one I'll draw your attention to is mailout.ini. So if we open that up, we'll just take a look at what's in there. So firstly, this particular file enables exporting of messages posted to either echo mail or net mail message bases. We'll explain that a little bit more in another video. But it basically still assumes that you're using the default setup, you're using a Raspberry Pi or Linux OS, and there is one function that we've set up to work in this particular any file and that's exporting um, ignore the Binkley style flow but it's effectively saying export messages that are either echo mail which is kind of like public uh, posts to message boards or net mail which is more like private email and then in the general stanza we've set ec export echo mail to true the rest of these general settings are the same as the previous video and then if we go down to export echo mail there's not much here there's simply just one switch which can either be set as true or false and that is set to false so that's effectively saying when a message is um, posted on the bulletin board uh, if the person is still logged in you can still go ahead and export the message now, in order to make this work, you might recall last time what we did was we ran the Mystic Utility, which was Mutil. And you may recall that if we run it without pointing to a configuration file, it's just going to can out with a fatal error because no processes were defined. So this time round, we will run Mutil mail out dot any. And when I run that, you'll see that it's run the exporting echo mail process and it's saying one echo mail uh, post has been exported. Now, I've, I like to go back and have a look at the uh, log files because I think it's important to follow along initially and figure out what's happening. So if we go into the Mutil log file, which is date stamp today, and open it up, you'll see that it is showing us that it's running the process of exporting echo mail it finds in the message base which is fsx underscore gen the first message it was posted and it was exporting it to the echo uh, the fsx net hub that we're using one message is being sent and then it's taking that and effectively this is the raw message it's saved as a packet file so if you were to view this with a text file editor you'd see 
pretty much the text of the message and a few other bits and pieces. And it's simply just compressing it using zip and it is ultimately sticking the files in a directory called echo mail out primary. So let's just have a look at what those look like. Here's our echo mail out primary and we're left with two files. Now the way this works is that you've got um, a file which has got this extension CLO and if you open it up it's just really a an index file. It's simply pointing to the other file that's sitting in that um, echo mail out primary directory. And the mailer that we're going to use looks to this file, this index file, to figure out um, what other files it should be sending off when it does connect to the hub. This file here is effectively the message and it's just been compressed using zip. So if I was to open this with, or actually I should just run if I double click on it it might open it up. There we go. You can see inside there is the, the message itself. And if I double click on that, uh, it's coming up with all sorts of errors. I won't bother trying to reveal what that looks like at the moment. But just trust me when I say these two files partner together and that this one's the message and this one's effectively pointing the mailer system to the files it's got to send. Uh, side note too, the CLO just basically has a, a, a meaning and that effectively means send it straight away if you are trying to um, poll another system. So how do we send this message out? You will recall that here in the configuration side of things we created an echo mail node which is this hub and in there we set up a host that we're polling and also a session password let me in. So in order to connect to this hub there is another executable called FidoPoll. Fido poll. Now if I run that on its own it'll come up with a number of switches that you can use and what we're going to do today is we're actually just going to specify an address. So we're going to say FidoPoll 21 1 100. So that's the echo node that we want to connect to. Now when I run that you'll see that it's connecting to uh, the hub and it's currently receiving and sending a whole lot of messages and files. So we've managed to send one but we've also got 14 different things in return. Some of these are messages, some of these are files which could be imported into our file base and that's the subject of a different video. But for now, if I go back into this uh, file browser and I have a look now, the echo mail out primary is empty because the file's been sent. And on the flip side, the echo mail in directory now has a bunch of files here. And these ones here are all messages. Uh, from here down, these are files that could be imported into our file base. Now, I also just want to log in to the Mystic BBS and quickly just go back to that message that I was showing you before because having exported the message out you'll see now that the status has changed to sent so you can see that this has left the bulletin board it's still sitting here but a copy has been sent out and if you were um, logged in and just as a user using this bulletin board and everything was set up we've gone through all the setup videos, you'd find that uh, after 60 seconds, if you come back and look at this message after you'd posted it, the sent status would have already been displayed, because the board usually sends stuff out within 60 seconds. Now, the other thing we can do is we can just quickly take a look in the logs, because FidoPoll has its own log as well. So you'll see that it's showing that it's polling 211100 via IPv4, it's connecting to agency.bbs. In this case I'm doing this video through an internal LAN so it's actually just polling another computer on my system but otherwise this would show a different IP address. Then there's a whole lot of transactional stuff which you can look at at your leisure but effectively files are being sent and received and at the end it shows you how many were sent and received. So that's all good. We've now managed to connect to the hub. We've sent our message off 
and we've also received some. Next question becomes, well, how do I import these messages that are currently sitting in the Echo Mail in folder? And for that, you need a third configuration file, which just happens to be called Mail In, as in any file. So let's open that up and take a look at it. The Mail In configuration file does two things. It will allow you to import messages and it will also allow you to import files. And in order to turn those functions on, you do it here. Now, in, for this video, I'm just going to worry about importing the messages, which is this import echo mail. So there are two stanzas. And if we scroll down and take a look at the import echo mail, I just want to take you through the various settings. The first thing is that it allows you to set up what's known as a dupe message index. So if you want to save duplicated or what are known as bad messages to a certain message base, then you can set this value up to the index of a message base that you create in the message base editor. Otherwise, just comment it out. Uh, I like to use this. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and set that base up right now because I think that's kind of worth doing. So if we go config into the editor's message base editor and I'm going to insert a new base. This one is going to be called dupes. You must set it to local. The echo tag I don't think matters. We'll make the file name dupes. And under the list ACS, uh, I think we'll set it at S2555. Everything is going to be at the highest level for the, for the SISOP or the SISOP, however you want to say it. G1. Over here. Um, again, I'm not sure whether this actually matters, but I will set it to a thousand messages or 365. Now, note that it says up here ID 10. So when I escape out of here, and this must be a local message base as well, that's really important. So when I get out of all this and I go back into my configuration file, I'm going to uncomment this and I'm going to set that base ID to 10. So your one will change depending on what the ID number was. Next, this just sets up the maximum number of messages that this database will track and I'm leaving it at the maximum. Uh, these settings here I think you should leave on their default as well. So unsecured directory true. This effectively means if you receive messages or files from a system that you don't know, that you haven't defined as a echo mail node, at the very least, it's going to look at, at uh, information contained in the, um, it's this folder here, unsecure, echo mail and unsecure. And usually if a system sends you uh, private mail, net mail, it will at least drop into there and you'll be able to import that in, even if you don't know uh, the sender. So it's a bit like receiving unsolicited email, but it works um, in bulletin board sense. Strip seen by false, leave that to false. Leave everything else pretty much as is. And also down here, you'll see that there's an option for auto-creating. So if you receive a message posted to a message area your system isn't set up for, Mystic is going to go ahead and create the message base based on some default settings. So it's going to set the list access to S10G1 and so on and it's going to set the maximum number of messages for the base and the age and everything else. But even better than that, you can actually set these settings up specific to the address that uh, the message is being sent to. So if your system address is 211999, which is, you'll recall, the default kind of test address that we're using for these videos, then if it receives a message uh, for a base that uh, is addressed to this system, then these rules will apply. So you can go ahead and change this perhaps when you get your own node number, or well, you should do, but the point is that uh, you can configure all sorts of setups in advance so that Mystic will do the heavy lifting for you. Then we've got another area uh, set up for importing the files, but we're going to come to that in a different video. So for now though, we've got a, uh, an any file here called mailin.ini, which is sitting in the Mystic directory which you'll see right here, mail and any, and I'm now going to run that 
and see if we can't just suck in some of these new messages. So let's see what happens. We'll go mutil mail in. You don't even need to put the any in, I think. Yeah, we'll just go with that and see what happens. And sure enough, magic is happening. Look at that. 316 messages were imported. Uh, they were echo mail messages, so what you'd call public messages, readable by everybody. There's no private one-to-one uh, -one net mail. There were no duplicates in what was being imported, and everything was tossed in 1.89 seconds. If I go into the log files, and we take a look at the mutual uh, log file with today's date stamp at the time of recording. Whoops, that's the wrong one. It's this one here. Then you'll see here we are. We're starting up using mail in any. It's running the uh, process importing X, uh, echo mail. And then you can see that it's finding in one of these compressed packets or files a whole bunch of messages, individual packets. And this one is from the hub address to our test address and it's imported as message number two into the, that message base. And on and on it goes. Just lots and lots of messages being imported, other packets being opened up, and so on. So we can get to the bottom of this and you can see down here it's saying it's imported 316 and at this point it's saying look I don't know what I want to do with these files, they're unknown to me. And as I said, that will be the subject of another video. So if we log into the bulletin board now, let's read our new messages. Go into the message area, and if I go read and press enter, you'll see there's now 317 messages. That's a lot. And there they all are. So if I press number, press on number two, you can see we've now got other messages that have been sent in. This one's dated the 22nd of November. It's using the American uh, displayed format there. Also, uh, another tip too is a file call or an option called the indexed message reader. So if you press I, you'll see that it's showing you the uh, file groups and the various message bases that are set up and uh, here we are. It's just a nice easy way of seeing that there's 317, 29 are addressed to me, um, 315 are new and from here I can start going through and reading messages and replying to them and so on. So for now I'm going to stop the video and in the next video we'll be taking a look at this thing called Netmail which is more like as I said the sort of private one-to-one -one, uh, messaging that you can use in a bulletin board. That's all for now though, thanks for watching.